Da, 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 da. Festivals. Festivals is right. Ladies and gentlemen, members and friends, Adam Ioannidis, Alex Moores, SMWS Australia, we're here for the full 12 Drams Festival Virtual Tasting Pack. All 12, not the five, for five regions, the full 12. We are doing this as a pre-recorded video, but feel free to drop all your questions in the chat and we'll get back to you. How are you feeling, Alex? You ready for I'm this? I'm feeling excited. I think, you know, it's basically like we said, a dram every six minutes or so. We've, we're going to do it in an hour to allow you time to then revisit drams. Um, but what an exciting bunch of having 12 different festival releases, a whole festival outturn. I don't think we've ever done an entire festival outturn with just festival releases. No, I don't, I don't think we, we did. Even last, last year was probably our, our largest um, festival outturn to date in terms of rare release casks, yeah, but um, we still had normal single casks in there. So this is fun. Let's and do it. I think the first cask up is a uh, rare release five, Philosopher's Stone. Excellent. You probably can't see that, but it's Rare Release 5, Philosopher's Stone, 20-year-old Juicy Oak and Vanilla. Thank you. Uh, probably the only one uh, that you won't be able to get um, unless you've already got a bottle because it's been released. Um, but obviously everyone who had this particular tasting pack, if you missed a bottle, you still get a chance to try it, which is great. That's true. This one, we only really got, I think it was 24 in the country, and by the time we you know, supplemented for events and tasting packs. We only really got to sell 12 and they all disappeared. It's been a funny one too, because sometimes, you know, just the five rare release or otherwise doesn't, isn't at the top of a lot of people's lists, but uh, fortunately, because we opened a fair few of these at events became amazingly popular very fast. Oh yeah. This was, um, we had a little VIP tasting as well. And Carly from Starwood uh, absolutely fell in love with this one. And I can see why it's so, it's so juicy and just, yeah, it's absolutely fragrant. right profile. Absolutely right profile, and it's got that, as you say, like lowland floral, um, really elegant with that uh, 20 year old age statement as well. Mm. We'll probably be doing this a lot tonight with the uh, 12 drams folks, but if Adam and I drink it at the same time, you get a lot of dead air, but that's just how it is. Um, lovely pears yeah. and orchard fruit, delicious amount of. Um, I think the cask is very well integrated here in terms of the actual wood. Like it's there, but it's not, doesn't dominate the freshness of it. No, well, it's entirely first all ex-bourbon barrels. And 54%, so that's quite easy drinking. That is a very lovely dram. I'm getting, do, do you, did you say uh, you're uh, getting, orchard getting fruit, a lot of that? Orchard fruit. Um, yeah. Wood influence though? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it's there uh, in every sip, but it sort of doesn't dominate. No, yeah. sometimes it can with particularly you know triple distilled uh, if it's um, lost too much of its uh, spirit character as a result of that um, and then that's the way they do it it's their house style but um, sometimes the wood can dominate I think here it's nicely balanced and distillery five do they typically always triple distill yeah yeah and distillery five is in the lowlands as we are celebrating the lowland festival in this six minute interval yep. start start lowland work our way up Scotland as we go kind of we get higher and we get to the highlands that is that is very nice. I can see why it's um, it, people fall in love with it because I think it's that something for everyone. It's got elegance and complexity. If you're a seasoned whiskey drinker, you find so much in it, um, but it's also super approachable. Yeah, it's it, you can drink this and not have to worry. I know a lot of members are like, oh, I don't get these tasting notes. I can't figure out these tasting notes. That is so fun because if you drink it and you enjoy it, then that's all that really matters. That's so right. that's beautiful. Cool. Unfortunately, we might have to. Uh, Power on through move, move along, revisit that one mm -hmm. later. The after part on that, or the, the now I've sat it down, is just yeah, a lovely amount of candied sweetness as well. So it's um, that's an absolute that's a stayer, that's beautiful. Next, and remember, you can pause this at any time and enjoy your drams. That's the beauty of not doing this live. We can't, we have to just press on, unfortunately. Time limit. <laughs> Distillery 39, rare release, cross Atlantic destinations, spirit of space side festivals. Oh, yes, now this was probably my pick from the festival casks um and i believe oh, it was bailey's pick as well is, and I, I, I don't want to just follow suit but uh particularly at the melbourne festival as event it was certainly my the one i was recommending everybody try it, just another way of saying it's my pick too oh my lord this is it's very hard to describe what makes it so amazing on first nose but it's just an absolute um 
it's like a nice level of French polish mm. overlay on everything. And that just make it, give, it almost like gives it old bottle effect. Not old bottle effect, but uh, makes it seem like an older whiskey. And like a stately I'm... sort of, yeah. yeah. French polish is a great note. It's like French polish on pe over peaches. Yes, exactly me. right. Exactly right. I remember but, this being a very viscousy dram, absolutely mouth coating, and I'm yeah. It's just I mean, and it, it will breathe beautifully because I mean here we're a bit uh, we can't let it have the full. Um, or you at home you definitely can leave a little bit in the glass, um, but it it will develop a hundred percent because this one's creeping up fifty eight point four percent, and this one we do have some stunning. stock still left of. We do for all the space side um, releases. So stunning. That is like um like candied pineapple you get on cocktails. Mm. Yeah, it'd be a beautiful amount, like a very uh, subtle note of pastry even on the nose. I'm hoping it's it's there on the palate, I oh. can't remember. And definitely a bit of vanilla cream pastry. Yeah. On yep. the palate. It's not as oily as I remember it being, but still quite mouth coating. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not so much mouth coating, but it's it's it stays everywhere. It's on your palate. Yeah, yep. the flavour is there. Oh, the, no the nose on it in particular is just absolutely stunning. <sighs> there's, uh, there's a note I can't quite pick, but... Mm. I'd be curious. We probably won't do too much of it. We might, um, as we go, time permitting, but trying with uh with water without water yep trying with time and and immediately on your on your fresh open but you know what 58.4 percent i will just worth quickly. a go yeah that is everything i want a festival space side whiskey i think that's as well another point which we'll probably hit on as we go through the regions and we've got a fair few space side to get through but mm. regionality is sort of once you especially with Fun packs like this where you can do them all side by side, you really start to see some parallels and, and synergies between the region. So even though they're totally different distilleries, you sort of go, oh, that's got that like lovely space side note, and then you just have to unpack what that means. But yeah. I was about to define this as just like exactly what I want in a space side dram, and then had to think about what I meant. And then what are you going to say for the other space side dram? Well, exactly. Um, and just a note, we are going in the order tonight that's on your menu, not in order of pure regions. Yes. Yeah. The next one is also a space side malt. I'm, I must say, I may put a little touch too much water in this, but I don't, I don't think it needs it. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. I don't think it needs it. Mm. Sort of a testament to that, having that older whiskey quality, even though it's not sort of musty and old, but it's got the, the depth of an, an old whiskey is... You usually probably wouldn't put too much water in an old whiskey, and I think that stacks up here, even though the age statement doesn't reflect it. No, it's 13, 14? 15. Yeah. 15 years yeah. old. So, okay. I mean, very uh, very reasonable, but just not that kind of... You you would have... I would have called that incorrectly on age statement in a blind, I think. No, oh, that's... Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Shall we... Uh, Let's go all it. We're going to stick to the space side region. Similar ABV as well, 58.4% for rare release, 12 heritage puddings... Follow breakfast. Have you ever had a heritage pudding before? I don't think I've ever had one. No, it's one of those lovely tasting notes that is, is it is a Scottish term, I'm assuming. Or it's a <sighs> who knows? One of those Pro probably. I mean, they tend to be mostly Scottish uh, they do. references. The old Clutie dumpling was always always through members who weren't familiar with the Scottish dessert. Um, um, I'm they include to me. <laughs> they are delicious. Whiskies that include that in the name and also the thing itself. Ah, oh, yeah. So it's a ten year old. Spicy and sweet. The um, the profile uh, is definitely right on this one. I think immediately on the nose, like they're the two top notes you get. Yeah. This is almost um, like straight away on the nose. My first impression is very similar to the '94. Yes, Laro Creme Brulee. Yeah, like that sort of very um, very sweet, straight yeah, in the like face, unctuous rich, and it smells like it's going to be rich. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. But this one may be a bit more, um, I'm almost getting like a white pepper or a, um, uh, a touch of something savoury and spicy as opposed to like a baked spice. I think the uh, soiree or creme brulee had a bit more of that tart to tan kind of like Christmas spice. Yeah. This I get a little bit more, yeah, peppery, peppery spice. Mm. I'm getting some barley sugars on the nose as well. Yeah, great call. 
We haven't, um, we generally, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we've mostly seen uh, quite older 12s come through recently. I can't remember the last That's time right. we got a, quite a younger 12. Yeah, no, I think they um, they push at the, the 30s. Mm. Um, I just opened the last couple at least. For me, that is such a... It's the complete opposite of the nose. Yep. I was going to say, I'm actually quite surprised by it. I'm not... Yeah. It's uh, that, That's not even sweet in the slightest. No, it's gone full savoury. There's a nice amount of umami. It's almost like some sort of um, like soy sauce-based sauce that's um, coming across for me on the palate and that's not there at all on the nose. Like soy sauce? Well, definitely not like raw soy sauce, though. Not... Right. not um, more like... Meat coated in a glaze that has soy sauce in it. Okay. <laughs> I'm splitting hairs a lot on it, but it's not quite... I have had some soy saucy drams. This is not that, but... How good is meat? Drop a comment in the chat if you like meat. No, you'll break the internet. Everyone will do it. That's true. But after, after um, tasting that, the nose is significantly less sweet as, as well. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, that's a very uh, a broad, broad term. I, I've heard you talk about, like, dessert notes in drams and how that that could really mean like what does that really mean yeah, exactly. so so many but no I, I agree with you 100 percent. and that's that thing where um what's the, my favorite phrase the uh the retro nasal effect of it once you've had it in your mouth and you've got yeah. a whole different view of it then when you go it's, back to the nose you're getting an entire well, it's true i mean the the two senses are, are linked correct yeah that's lovely i think that's if you're looking to and i think both are definitely available if you're still looking mm. to pick up one um and you don't have this pack and you're watching this video, because otherwise if you've got the pack, you can decide for yourself. Um, but the, the Cross Atlantic is definitely a sweeter dram. Absolutely. More rich, more pastry, and a little bit more, um, sort of feels like it's got more depth of those um, complex fruit notes. This one's more umami and spice, especially after the palate. Um, but the sweetness is definitely there on the nose as well. And it really just goes to show the... Um uh, breadth of flavors that you can get, not just in the um, space side region, but also in our s sweet and spicy flavor profile. Yeah, mm. same flavor profile, tastes completely different. Absolutely. Yep, need to read the notes carefully because whichever way the balance goes on it will matter a lot. And just quickly, um, also, I can kick us along if you like while you talk about please, that. Please do, because now I'm a little bit stunted as I've just realized the order is either wrong on the tasting uh, sheets or it's wrong in the menu. Either the printer has... Uh, it's wrong all over. Mm. But we are announcing them, so... No, you I'm not confused. So, <laughs> if you're watching this at home with your tasting pack, the menu has been accidentally printed the wrong way around. So, the middle pages... So, <laughs> so next they'll work it out. They'll ne work next, it out. we're doing to the chippy. You'll figure out the the thing. Booklets um, can be tough sometimes. Indeed. So we are doing take me to the chippy. Chippy, oily and coastal, rare release number four. Um, and I was particularly excited for this. I thought this would be my favourite. Again, I'm thinking maybe thirty nine, uh, rare release thirty nine might might kick it out. But oily and coastal distillery four, twenty I, years age. You don't really go wrong with that. I don't think. No. Never. It's a combination of HTMC, Oloroso, and Refill X Bourbon uh, Hogsheads. I uh, recently featured this at, well, obviously, this was featured at the face of, uh, Sydney Face Event, the Melbourne Face Event, uh, but also it was a members only pour at the Brisbane Whiskey Live tasting. And every member loved it. it, just shock and awe on their face in the good way. I also had a chance to um, give a dram for it to the Mm. Distillery Four uh, rep who was oh, there, nice. thing, and they were, yeah, they were quite blown away by it. Which I really like that. I, I did nose and and taste while you were talking. I think it's um, it's also the interesting comment you made worth touching on. These are uh, vattings. Mm. They were in the rare release range, and say what you like about some people love the single cask i love a single cask but hmm. what this allows you to do and i think they've done it very successfully in this one and i would say the 39 as well as very clear examples is combine different casks to really round out every quality you want yeah um, rather than rely on the kind of magical single cask to give you everything and then you know you don't you don't know what you don't know you don't know what it's missing 
but the creation of this has gone, I want a bit more salt here, I want a bit more sweetness there, let's put the Oloroso in, let's up the wood by putting in HTMC, whatever has happened at the creation stage. Because, uh, you know, to say faultless, I don't mean that they're like the greatest whiskies I've ever tried, but they are so well balanced, every one of these. I think. They're not any less tastier than the single casks. And Another as, very as our, our head of spirits, our head of whiskey, um, put it in an article about these rare releases is... As a society, we don't just bottle everything that's single cask. We bottle what tastes good, whether it be a heresy blended malt or a small batch single malt or, you know, a extra maturation single cask. Well put. Exactly. Um, that, is, that is, again, like profile fit. Sometimes there can be a little bit of oh, yeah. uh, disagreement on which profile something should be in. I think this one wouldn't cause any dispute. Like, it's the viscousness is there on the palate. On the nose, it's everything. It's saline. Um, it's actually... As well, a slightly more peated than I was ready for. You know, okay. I thought maybe like oily and coastal, it would probably otherwise have gone to very lightly peated distillery four. Um, but well, we, we peat lovers, that's okay. Yeah, we've definitely seen some obviously peated distillery four and lightly peated distillery four, and some um, oily and coastal. But this one, I mean, the name "Take Me to the Chippy," a callback to you know fish and chip shops in the UK. Um, we do also have those here. If you're aware <laughs> of that. Um, Not like heritage. Straight food. away on the nose. All I could smell was um, the wrapping paper in fish and chips, not the newspaper that, you know, so s seldom fewer than use anymore, but just that. Yeah, very good call. I mean, the, the, and the salt is so prominent oh, as of well. Of course, because it, it's, not, it's not just that paper, but it's the paper combined with the oil and the salt and, you know, the vinegar of the chips. Definitely, yeah. No, and I definitely get that vinegar on the, on the palate as well. Yeah, it, is, it does have a slight, um, you know, like a tartness or a, or a sharpness to it on the palate, not in an unpleasant way, but in a kind of, Pulls back the salt a bit on the palate. I think on the nose, very, um, you don't want to say very salty, because people think when you say very salty, it means like too much salt. I love the amount of salt it's got, but. No, it's, it's not at all very salty. Um, I've definitely had saltier drams before. This is a, a very modest amount. It's, it, well, it's almost got like a, um, a, a very, I'm just going to say sweet glaze, because I can't pick the sweetness. Well, I'm with you, because I just got a, um, a really like that kind of like artificial cherry sweet note in like cherry lollies just kind yeah of through, okay which is kind of it, it's sweet but it's also got that tartness not not sour but it's just that little bit more biting that is that is delicious i think that will especially with the age statement on it that will benefit from time as well oh, absolutely we've just opened I've, these, i think 54.7 percent can't remember where i put the bottle now but yeah, yeah probably 54 54.7%. Oh, here we go. Yes, here it is. Every time I try it, I... Um, yep, 547 Yeah. I, I fall, more, fall more in love with it. Definitely. But we're going to part with it. We are. So we can stay with all these all day. Like all good things, it must come to an end. And we must say hello to Rhubarb and Fig Crumble. Nice. Rare release 55, 58.2%. Highland Festival. I love Distillery 5. I just like just an absolutely missed distillery. Distillery 55. 5 or distillery 55? Oh, sorry, 55. Well, I do love distillery I, 5. Distillery 5 well, is also very good, by the way. But I uh, yeah, I think 55 is is that absolute sleeper. Like, it's sort of Myself people too. become aware of it, particularly society members. You know, we get a, a, a nice amount through. Um, but in broader whiskey world, the distillery isn't you know, particularly prominent. But, man, they make, they make really good liquid. Ah, oh, that has... A bit of a synergy uh, back to heritage puddings, I think. On the nose, absolutely. The nose. And I'm very curious to see what the pal's going to be like. Is it going to be that stark contrast like heritage puddings yeah. was? We're in, because um, we're in Juicy Oak Vanilla Land, aren't we? We are. This one. Yes. Uh, it does already, again, you, I feel like you sometimes can tell, but it, the nose suggests it's going to be viscous to me. They have a nice, um, a nice oily quality to it. The um, the bakery on this is also higher. I think the it's a lovely amount of bake. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. It's definitely a pastry, but I'm trying to think what the filling is. It's some sort of custard. But Might be a croissant. A croissant. A croissant. Oh, yeah. Not a croissant. Or a croissant. croissant. Correct. A croissant. But no, it's um. It, I, I agree with you. It's, it's something very buttery. But then there's it's got something yeah. with that, like a. I love like that casting sugar. Yeah, I, it's. Very inviting. You go first. Mm. Let's see. Mm. Let's see what the verdict is. 
I would say that Juicy and Oak and Vanilla uh, moniker probably came from the Oak, actually, primarily. A little bit vanilla on the on the on the nose, definitely because the pastry and the custard comment was on point, I think. But the on the palate, like um, really lovely, you know, like a uh, pencil shaving school desk school box kind of thing, like you know the yeah. the note that sometimes appears where we're probably say too young to to remember like little proper pencil boxes in the way that the panel describes the note, but yeah, you sort of know what they mean. Pencil yeah. shavings, yes. Pencil box, probably, probably exactly, not. Exactly. My favourite note, actually, that I added to um, the soiree with creme brulee, actually, yeah. was, do you know, like, the inside of, like, a violin case? Where it's kind of like the violin plus the violin box. Just a really beautiful... It's oak, but with a touch of touch of varnish. Yeah. It, it's been a long time since I've uh, had the aromas of the inside of a violin case grace my... It's, it's, a, it's a, yeah, for, for non, non-musicians like me, it's very rare, but I just remember <laughs> it from, from school. I, I, used to, I used to know a fair few people who played violin back in the day. Mm. Um, straight away, what I had on the palette was, um, it was a very specific note, but there's a, um, a Greek sort of cookie that we make, we bake around Christmas time, uh, sorry, Easter time, called a, a gluri. Uh, and it sort of reminds me of that before we put it in to bake. Uh, so it's, uh, yes, it's the dough element of it. Dough and, and the casting sugar. But it's like it's a very specific, like... Obviously it's, quite it's got sweet. vanilla extract as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Well, very, yeah. very, very sweet. Sounds like that. But, yeah, it. specifically just before it's put in. This is this is fantastic. It is actually. It opens up into it's got like a it's a honey note as well. Um, I think the sweetness is like it's not that sugary sweet. It's a it's more complex. I'd say it's probably like a honey sweetness. The nose has definitely gotten less caster sugar sweet, but I think the palate. Yeah, the palate, and and it, it's really hard to know whether I'm saying an off-putting phrase because I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely it's oak. There's a it's probably of all the ones so far, I would say this has the most oak the most oak. to it. Um, in terms of that pencil box. And maybe it's because it's also a little bit chewy. Like, it's got a really good mouthfeel in terms of chewiness. Yep. And sometimes I associate that with, like, chewy tannin. Um, that is very good. I still think um, it doesn't right. quite pip it for my number Cross one spot, yeah. but it's, uh, it's very nice. Oh, I mean, we've got 12 drams mm. to go through. Very pleasant. All right. All right. Are you ready? How are you going? I'm Need ready. Water? No, I'm ready. Let's right. do it. First six and rare release eighty five well. free film jazz. Excellent. Fifty seven point five percent. We're back in the space side region for this one. Excellent. Back in the spicy and sweet flavor profile. Fifteen year old. So we have got two fifteen year olds for space side. Both spicy and sweet. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, or Ooh. sometimes how the casks are battered. That was a nice little, you know, use the analogy and then very clearly explain what you, you can, meant. You can use that one, SMWS Australia. The way that the casks are added. Use that at work. So yeah. What, see how many people it throws. Um, immediately, though, like, that is, that is a very good nose. That's, it, it's very, to me, it's got a, um, it's sort of in the same echelon as the rhubarb. And the oh, I agree. In that, in that pastry, custard pastry. 100%. It's gone even one layer more confectionery for me. It's like bottom of the lolly bag, but on okay. all the notes. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, it's, instead of being maybe like a raspberry Danish, it's just lolly raspberries. It's kind of gone that one step further on the sweet, but that's only on the nose. I reckon the spicy and sweet probably comes because the palate might, might ta- taper that off with some spice. Well, now I have trust issues because of that heritage pudding's I oh, know the rare release <laughs> yeah. twelve. Like, what will the palate actually taste like? That and that what that was a disconnect. Oh, I think both of those. It's a really good comment. Both of those are good. Sometimes you want a dram that is so consistent that everything from the nose carries through. It has a taste as well as an aroma. You know where you stand. And other times it's just two drams for the price of one. If yeah. you get a different nose, it's palate. Um, it's efficiency. I've always said. I mean, people are different, but I'd, I'll buy a bottle on the nose. Um, and I was talking to someone about this. Oh, I think it was Charlie McLean saying, you know, I always buy on the nose and like the palate's the palate, but still a spectacular nose is worth buying the bottle. And we, he said, he said something just, you know, I didn't thought of it. He said something like, oh, well, yeah, but how much time do you spend nosing it versus how much time is it in your mouth? And I'm like, that's a very good point. Probably it, 10 times as much time smelling it as drinking it. It's an interesting point because I, I, I think probably about a year and a half, two years ago now, I said to Matt, um, do you think we talk too much about the nose when describing a whiskey? 
Um, it's I sort of had that opinion of where it's like, well, you know, I can smell nice. Absolutely. It's part of it, but you're tasting it yep. at the end of the day. And he said to me, I don't think we spend enough time talking about the nose. I'm with him. He's a smart man. I've always said that. Sometimes he comes up with some, you know, nuggets of wisdom. No, everything. Everything he says. He's like a guru. You've got to just go with it. Whatever he says, you've got to do without question. It's so weird. I can, thought I could hear him laughing in the distance. I know. It's, it's, he's in our heads. Yeah, at all times. absolutely. Much like Jonestown, you know. Yeah. He's, drink, the, drink the whiskey. Drink the whiskey is what he tells us, and we do it. Even when I'm not in the customers. office with him, I'm editing his videos. I, like, his voice is just everywhere. And yeah. then he calls me, and it's like I'm looking at his face whilst on the oh, phone. Mate, yeah, he's rent-free in your head for it's life a, now. It's a, it's a curse, not a blessing. Um, what is a blessing, though, is actually the nose on this, though. Oh, the nose. But even the palate, it's like if... if imagine if vanilla extract was in a like a vanilla malt thick shake i'm with you i thought you were going to say vanilla extract had a baby with something and i was ready for it <laughs> you went somewhere way more descriptive no it was, it was it was like if a vanilla extract like it's that that level of um vanilla sweetness like just yes. you know very sickly sweet but it's it's a thick it's a mm. thick palate you know it sort of just like slowly rolls down the back of your mouth but i definitely think um yeah the, it, that's where the spice is in terms of the spicy and sweet profile the um, uh, the earlier spicy and sweet, where you go, okay, I can see how they've done that on the nose. It's sweet, but there's a spice element to it. I'm not getting, I would say, almost any spice, or certainly before trying it. Uh, on After the, on trying the nose. it? What but, do you think on the nose? Because I'm getting a little bit. It tapers it. It tapers the sweetness down, yeah. definitely. Um, which I, I, it did with the earlier one. Makes sense it would, would with this, but definitely um, on this, I got no spice originally all spice on the palate and now it's more of a rounded um, rounded effect there's a um, there's a touch of something very pleasantly medicinal about it on the nose now for me hiding at the back it's almost like a um, like a when cough syrup is kind of enticing as a flavor you know when you like smell cough syrup and it's like, oh that's that's not terrible that's okay there's I remember a, as a child touch of that. that yeah like I think it's a, it's something about the, it's like a raspberry or a strawberry or a, you know, generic red berry flavoring yeah. thing going on that they, is artificial, but it's actually kind of working. Mm, very good. Mm. Halfway point. Halfway, halfway point. Halfway point. I, I have I did not record where we were with time. I've no idea whether we're at the halfway mark, but I think that's we'll, right. We'll producer, find it's time to move on anyway. Alan. Adam has just given us a thumbs up. So let's move on to the seventh dram. Did you just did you just give yourself a thumbs up on the side and then we're, you're moving us up? Are you two people? We're in Fight Club and Adam is is two people and he's seeing himself over there doing things. But that's because we've had six drams. Seventh dram time. Seventh dram. Rare release forty eight. Tony Garibaldi. A quick note. So you may have noticed the uh, Sherry Takeover um, sort of slogan on some of these rare release casks, and that's because we have been working so closely and so hard with a lot of. Um, bodegas in the Sherry Triangle, Jerez, to source um, some incredible Sherry casks, both seasoned oh. and also uh, bodega Sherry casks, unseasoned that actually had genuine Sherry in them and have for probably, I think, 50, 70 plus oh, years. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, well, everything's Solera, so you know, who knows? It's probably hundreds. Yeah, exactly. The last drop of something um, in there, but... And there's a lot of sherry casks in amongst these single malts, but this is the only deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profile dram in the lineup. Ooh, other than is Writing Bureau? Technically, Writing Bureau, so you will notice, Writing Bureau does have the orange flavor strip, but it is not a deep, rich, and dried fruits. Uh, because generally, heresy it, not applied yeah, to the profile. Heresy don't have profile, but it is a space side malt and... Anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that. We'll come back to that. That was me jumping the gun. This, however, is... That is beautiful. That is... And I, I think, for those who don't know, members who don't know, I mean, we talked earlier about um, the heritage uh, pudding sort of concept. I mean, Tawny sort of speaks to the fortified wine nature of it, like Tawny Ports, whatever I would, I would say. Um, this is like those videos that uh, good old um, Richard and, uh, and Connors do, Not but nice. uh, in terms of the... Oh, wow. Well, how did the name get reached? We can do that when we come to the last one of the lineup. I'll, I'll mirror what I heard them say, which was brilliant. So this one is First Alex Bourbon and Refill American Oak PX. Yes. So the, the Tawny and the PX is a link. And then for those who haven't had it, I mean, it's not a Scottish concept, but Garibaldi Biscuits, 
um, being that, you know, sort of squished down. There's a little tiny bit of very thin pastry on it, but it's effectively just uh, squashed down red fruit, like Christmas pudding filling kind of raisins and, and, and sultanas and such. This on the nose, straight away, what I got was rum barba. Mm, yeah, I mean, there is, and I, I think that's a very, very good comment because there is a little bit, I was going to say something way less in, um, appetising than that, that there's a touch of acetone on it. It's got a little bit more of that, uh, that alcohol. Um, okay. Which the rum barba, I guess, you know, that kind of a, it's I very mean, aromatic alcohol coming yeah, from rum barba. I've only had rum barba once and it was this year and it was pretty much forced down my throat in a, in a good way. It was by me, but it was glorious. <laughs> e- e- eaten rapidly. I was not, given like you know, four you're on plates. some diet where a doctor made you eat it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It was no one else forcing it down my throat. That but. is. Yeah, no, you're, it's a, yeah, it's right. And it's got a, um, I think as well, on the nose now you've said it, maybe para suggestion, but there's a, um, there's like a tropical fruit thing. Uh, I'm getting quite a lot of, um, it's like a, a papaya, kind of like soft tropical fruit, which I don't know if that's Papa- maybe a connection to rum, S- but soft tropical f- fruit, I'm Caribbean. not quite getting, but papaya, I'm absolutely getting. Yeah, it's, it's, um, and again, not to fixate on the vatting process, but very well balanced and to be able to integrate PX into a broader vatting, um, is not necessarily easy either. So, well, I mean, we, we shouldn't we shouldn't necessarily write off the the vatting you know process. These are vatted single malts, but instead of thousands of casks, it's a handful. True, we're not no, talking it's, about it's, it making a mass blend. No, again. it's 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 flavour over volume. Still, at, rare at the release. end of the day, absolutely, yep. and it's still a. In fact, this is probably the lowest cast strength we've got in a. Where is it? In this batch of rare releases, forty nine point eight percent, which is quite low for SWS. And remembering that um, the age statement on whiskey is the um, the youngest in the in the glass or in the in the bottle, and so it could be that, especially with a low ABV, that maybe something with a, um, a higher age statement's made it in there, but that wouldn't be on the label in terms it could of age be statement. Forty year old whiskey, for all we know, honestly. That's right. That's right. And this this Speyside uh, release is still available on the website, but there are less than ten available. Yeah. There are literally a handful available of twenty year old re release forty eight. I can see why. I was joking with Matt at an event we ran in Melbourne recently about, um, where we were actually talking to some members about palate and how it changes. You know, you, six months you might love bourbon cask, six months you might like sherry cask, you go for peated, whatever. Um, uh, but yes, no, this one, I, I'm not in the sherry moment at the moment. I'm loving very clean first fill bourbon cask, etc. But the, um, the sherry on this is beautifully done. Not, re- not, not, not hot in the way that, you know, you might, it might be overly rich on the sherry clouding the distillery character. This is still got lots of spirit character. This is not a sherry bomb. No, this correct. Is, this is, as you said before, this is so well balanced. Um, and I've just been told by our producer that this... I think there's only five. Five. There's so five left on the website. And that's at the time of filming. So, yeah. Check. Check the website. There's probably none left. Suckers. I think we only got 48 of these from memory. I could check that. Um, right. And you know, really good, really good price point, and and approachable dram um, age statement that allows us to price it very reasonably for members. So, speaking of a good price point, the Writing Bureau is a thirty-year-old blended malt. So, this is the first blended malt we've ever done as a festival release. It's the oldest heresy blended malt we've ever done. Correct. And honestly, at oh, I might have to, Alex, I'll pour while you the honor. While you go. To double check the, uh, so I'm spitting straight facts here. Yeah, four hundred forty-nine dollars for a thirty-year-old blended malt is ridiculous. And again, we're talking small batch casks, not hundreds and thousands of casks. We're talking a very small amount. Thank exactly, you. Exactly. Exactly. You're very welcome. No, hundred percent. And it's um, it's the mystery of it as well that is part of the fun because. You can look at that and try to work it out. I know I've, I've already had a lot of messages from members asking if I know what it is because everyone assumes I've got some intel. Usually when I have the intel, I've just tried to sleuth it. Um, but half the fun is going, well, it's a 30-year-old space side. It, it, it's it is. declared as a space side, so we're confident second, it's only space side malt. Second fill, I believe. Yep, uh, exclusively second fill bourbon barrels. The um, the very interesting intrigue on this one is they have a published distillation date. So for heresy and and vatted releases, usually you might not have a distillation date no. because there's too many to to advertise. Suggests that there's a connection between the 
various distilleries that contributed to it, distilled on the same day. But hey, the rest is for up for our members to work out. The only thing I know is that it's casks from two different distilleries. There you go. No more, no less. And who yeah have coordinated their their distillation days to provide casks for this one. Makes perfect sense given the thirty year old age statement because you know with certainty <laughs> that it's going to be thirty years old based on that date. That is it is lovely. I, the the feedback and again the Melbourne centric nature of my comments, but. Uh, at the festival events in Melbourne, or the event major event in Melbourne, um, the comment was uh, this was expected to be lowest ranking, or not, not necessarily lowest, but, you know, it was sort of like, a, oh, we'll have an extra, we'll have an extra one. It's the heresy release of the day, and people were gobsmacked at how it made it into their top three. Unfortunately, heresy blended malts still have that negative connotation because they're a blended yeah. malt. At the end of the day, like I said before, which is what, just a repetition of what you had said, at the society, we bottle what's good. Correct. Doesn't have to be single cast. We're not yep. elitists like that. It's just what tastes good. And it's something about the... It's the um, the nature of a blend as well is often... We talk a lot about order of tastings. You know, we run a lot of tastings. We oh. usually have a sort of expected order. And blends or vattings make it to the front of the line because, well, you lead with that and you end with Pete. There's a, there's a standard to it. Um, you talk to someone like John McShane and he'll say, order is rubbish. Like as in the perceived order is rubbish. You should be thinking about every order of every tasting and sometimes Pete's in the middle or Pete's to start you off or whatever. And I think that's another reason these ones get overlooked. So like the first two or three drams in a lineup are perceived as like not as important. They're the starters when in fact they can be the most vibrant with the most depth or whatever it may be. Perfect example is the uh, St. Ali uh, single cask whiskey and single origin coffee event we did where the second dram, I believe, was the A Distillery 5 yes. fruit syrup party. It was. Yep. Yep. 19-year-old, I think. Yeah. Ridiculously good. Probably my second favourite dram of the tasting. Yep. yep. And that's it. Because you put it there because your palate's at a certain level and then, you know, you doesn't mean it's any... It's that whole perception, you know, is it's last is best and first is worst or whatever, just because of how we think about things, but not at all. And that's the only reason I bring up the comment for the uh, Melbourne members uh, at the festival event, just because it was it was an underrated thing, because they sort of arrived and went, oh, we'll have that first, and then we'll move on to other things. But it's it was hard to come back from for a lot yeah. of people. And to, I know one of our um, members mm. sort of half requested this in the Outturn group chat. I think it was... A Andy, this dram is lit. It seriously is. It is so good. On the nose, it's Don't like panda to individual. No, 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 it is. It's lit, okay? Because... <laughs> I'll shout out to individual members in a minute. Just give me a second. I'll think of a few people to no, no, say hello to. But just to <laughs> reference to something you said before where you thought I was going to say it's as if this tasting note had a baby with this tasting note. Yep. The nose on this is as if shoe polish... Had a baby with casting sugar pastry. I'm with you. you know, I'm with you on that 100%. Free oven. Like, yeah. Yep. We come back to that thing where acetone glorious. can be a nice note. It's yeah. sort of like you get that, that good level. It's like every, every note in every flavour wheel has a, a range. You know, you can take it to an off note level or you dial it back to the perfect point. I mean, motor oil is the best example I've got. And that every member I speak to has a different tolerance for sort of oil, like the flavour and the aroma of motor oil in whiskey. My tolerance is actually quite low but I know um, Matt's is higher than mine. Um, and then you go from sort of that, like, nice, clean Singer motor oil, like, uh, well, sorry, sewing machine oil, yep. all the way through to, like, you're in the pits at the F1, and someone's going to have a preference for where they land on that. Uh, very much the same with, uh, with all notes. And I think acetone's the same, sort of that, that I, polish note. I think I'm going to actually have to buy a bottle of this one. That is. Slightly. Like, that's, that's far better than what I remember it being the first time I tasted it. Me too. Well, you line us up with the next one, Adam. Uh, I reckon the for, for members who don't have this at home, and this is still available, as in who don't have the packs and aren't playing along with us, um, notes on this are the the space side element is there in terms of it's nice and fruity, but it's almost got a, like a floral note to it that I would attribute to Lowlands. Um, and I think that's an age statement quality. It's just elegant in terms of the... Uh, it's not like... Florals like, um, you know, uh, cosmetic floral. It's floral like walking into a fresh, like the Chelsea Flower Show is my is what I was saying to people when I was talking about this before in terms of floral. You know, it's it's not in your face, but there's just a, a lovely natural floral to it. 
that uh, works beautifully with the uh, fruit. Delicious. Uh, but with no further ado, Rare Release 93, 93. Viking Toothpaste. Celebrating the Campbelltown Scotch Whiskey Festivals. There's only, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, three distilleries in Campbelltown That's active correct. at the moment. That's correct. But I hear that number will increase very soon, probably next year. Well, it's kind of two. Oh. It's the unspoken thing, isn't it? We all know. But there is three. There's three. Um, this one is the, the unsung hero, though. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of reputation, for some unknown reason... Uh, amazing Campbelltown qualities, very synonymous with Distillery 27, um, but just not spoken about as or in the spoken about a lot, but not in the same breath, which they, I always find quite. They fun. don't have that cult following that Distillery 27 does, That's and right. and really, it's just you know, it's supply and demand at the yeah. end of the day. That's what creates hype. That's right. Really. Also, they they have you know they have a, a whiskey society. Don't have a whiskey society. Whiskey societies are bad. You know, don't do it. Do our one. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> the, uh, the common question on this one I got was, what's with the Viking? Because already on the nose, there is actually a lovely lactose quality, like the, um, in lolly milk bottles. And people kind of get the toothpaste connection. They go, I know exactly where the panel is going with that comment. The Viking thing, I'm not sure about, because usually that's a uh, distillery four tasting note. So, uh, so Vikings, for me, um, I would have thought that, it's a Viking funeral in that, you know, uh, they set the boat very out okay. in the ocean, fire arrow. That is smoke. a perspicacious comment, my friend. I think that's probably it because there is a nice amount of um, very light campfire smoke on it. It's not in your face. It's definitely, um, even though the smoke is actually relatively subdued in a nice way, I think that's one of the PTR 93s we've had through. Absolutely, and that's a nine-year-old ninety-three. That, that's fantastic. Other than being so beautifully oily, and having a nice amount of sail on, and all the nice things you'd expect for oily and coastal, that would be comfortably sitting in a peated ninety-three profile. I would say. I would say so. And you know what? If you're watching along and you don't have a tasting pack, and you want to taste these drams, if oh, you're in Melbourne, where are we? Where are we right now? You know what? We're actually upstairs. We're at there. Whiskey and Element. We're and there. downstairs is an open bar. Not an open bar it's in open the way that right it's now. not free, but it's no, open. No, it's not open like and you can, you can exchange Australian currency for drams. And they've got the entire June outturn on the bar. Whole festival release, that means. That's um, true. And absolutely hit. if you can't get down to Melbourne, then I hope you've bought tickets to your local face tasting. We've had three this past weekend. We had this massive Sydney face experience which was a massive success we had adelaide perth and sorry yeah P perth was last thursday and saturday was queensland and hobart I believe i think hobart's, hobart's yeah, coming up in a week hobart's yeah, coming up. Time. there's yeah there were a few on the same date and it's thrown me a little bit and went to Queensland recently too. So he's all he's in a different time zone. Even I did. Not I, in was, a different time zone. I was struck by the incredibly good weather, 20 degrees and sunny every day, as opposed to waking up to one degree oh, yeah. in Melbourne. Shout out to Scott Mansfield, who I met for the first time and was a fantastic <laughs> person to be at a Whiskey Live stand with. Thank you, Scott. Oh, well, now I need, I need to shout out to someone. I'll think of who. Scott, you, Scott would have been my first choice, obviously, so I'll think of someone. Um, the, so for those who love Pete, tick. Uh, if you end up missing out on a, another Peted festival release or you want a um, less meaty, umami level of Pete, mm. this is a really nice, clean campfire smoke with just a touch of the earthy Pete. Uh, and not, no, not heavy on the iodine, as you'd expect from 93, but it's almost there. It's almost like if you were into Distillery 29 and you don't want to grab a bottle of, of our final dram, which we'll talk to later, this would... You wouldn't be disappointed with a bottle of this. Uh, I was going to say a very stupid tasting note, but... We're all friends I'll say here. it anyway. We're all friends here. This reminds me of if a heavily peated Distillery 10 was yep. in a Highland. It was in the Highlands. No, I can see you what know, you mean like by that. Like, had a Highland uh, smoke in, instead. It's that sort of, like, very heavy campfire. As you said, it's, it could it almost be a peated... Dram. It's that sort of 93. If you're a fan of 93s, if you're a fan of Boiling Coastal, you will not be disappointed. 
If you're a fan of Peter, you will not be disappointed. Absolutely. This is, um, you know, entirely first fill expert in barrels. It is 93 at its best. And, and as always with the oil and coastal profile, the viscosity on the palate, I oh. mean, it's like I didn't even really need to keep drinking that. The finish has been going since first sip. No, so it's, it's deep and rich in terms of viscosity. Amazing. Jam. Which is good because the next jam is oil and coastal. Perfect Again, follow-up. Perfect we're going follow-up. back to the Highlands. So this is our final Highland whiskey. It is Distillery 149, 30th Gherkin, 62.4% ABV. I think this might be our highest um, alcohol by volume dram. It would be for festivals. It for, would. for the festivals, of course. It would. Um, um, unsurprising, we've done um, some... We've got a very good relationship with this distillery uh, yeah. in terms of their, their earliest and also their oldest um, in different categories. So uh, a long-standing supportive relationship with them. Uh, means we get access to some very good stuff, and I, I this was my um, front runner before I tried the thirty nine. Well, they were they were obviously very different profiles. Grappling for spot number one, I love this dram. If you haven't caught on yet, you are missing out on that thirty nine. This that release really thirty nine <laughs> is amazing. We've been talking about it a lot yeah. relative to the other ones. They're all lovely. Oh, that absolutely. happens that there's a captivating moment. But I'm about to change that because this is spectacular. Like the the um, integration of cask and spirit for this age statement is impressive, point one. The oily and coastal profile is spot on because mm. the viscosity on, like even of the nose, again, I'm talking about viscosity of the nose, but it, it smells so rich and deep and you're ready for the palate to be amazing. But the nose gives away sweetness, caramels, fr- uh, like syrupy fruit, not fresh fruit like the orchards of the Speyside, but a lovely rich uh, syrup fruit. And also just a touch of, like how salted caramel is in, in, enhanced by the salt, there's just a tiny element of umami that elevates all the other fruit sweetness on the nose for me. And I haven't even sipped it yet, and that's how good I think this whiskey is. You know what? You can probably just shut off the stream right there because that might be the best overview of how a whiskey <laughs> tastes ever. That was spot on. Got a supporter. Uh, that, nice. that, is, that was fantastic. But then, oh, and wait for this then. The palate, nice. No, I'm kidding. The, t- <laughs> the, palate, the palate is... You're not wrong. Good. It is damn nice. It is damn nice. And it moves very beautifully from that level of fruit uh, and, and sort of very um, uh, nice balance of sweetness in the fruit to that's where the savoury kicks in. The palate is where the savoury is. Absolutely. And you know what? Even after tasting the palate and then going back to the nose, what was your favourite term again? Retronasal? Retronasal. Retronasal. Black olives, like briny black olives on the nose, which is my favourite note from Distillery 149. We've seen, this is our third um, 149 we've seen this year alone. We've had some fantastic sherry matured. This is our first, um, well, it's a rare release, but it's entirely first select bourbon barrels. It's also one of the oldest Distillery 149s you'll probably see outside of the actual distillery itself. It's, it's pushing it because, I mean, it's only been sort of a functioning distillery for X years and yep. we're, when we're pushing that level, I think they might... Do they have a 10 now, maybe? No. Can't be right. Anyway, it is definitely one of the oldest. A, for sure. It, a nine, nine years old? Uh, eight, I think. Eight years old. Yeah. yeah. Um, Beautiful. I mean, the... This is glorious. This really is. It's one of those things where you, you don't really understand a name until you... And especially on the nose, Furtive Gherkin, what is that? And then you have a palate... That is, it is like a um, a dirty martini palette of that kind of uh, brine. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the, the olive or pickle brine. You want, you well, I believe I believe this um, distillery Lovely. put out a a whiskey called Arden Gherkin, which was you know doesn't give anything away. No, doesn't no, give anything away. This distillery, home. which is on the Arden Gherkin Peninsula, nice in the put. Highlands. That's right. Um, not that. We're going to tell you what the distillery is. It's very close uh, to the Adelphi Independent Bottler, I've heard. Uh, so I've heard. So I've heard, yeah. That is lovely, though. I mean, it's, it's um, also... Getting a lot of sweetness down it, on the nose as well. Absolutely. Like that salty sweetness, though, as you said, salted caramel. Yeah, it sort of amplifies yeah, it, both qualities. Exactly. It's also a... Uh, I love it when a younger whiskey benefits so well from time you know you mm. sort of expect it with an older whiskey it needs to open up a little bit but this one on the nose even though you know we only poured it a couple of minutes ago and i've been doing a lot of swirling and there's not much in there so it's, it's oxidizing heavily 
it's it's just developing. In about 20 seconds, can you sum up what swirling a whiskey does <laughs> in a glass? I can tell you what I think it does. It makes you look cool. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. I'll do it with the next one, and you just you, you watch for it. You see me do it. You can't miss it. Can we slow I'll, this down? I'll immediately look very cool. Who edits these videos? Oh, the Adam sitting over there that is your Fight Club version of Adam, who's our editor, that's telling you things in your ear. <laughs> oh, that's right. Pearl Jam is amazing. <laughs> that is lovely. All right. Well, the segue, if you're doing it in this order, which hopefully you are, will be very appropriate here because we've moved. We're moving from the oily and coastal last two into petered. I'm excited. Let's do it. Just to reiterate, the tasting order is correct on your tasting mats. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then second tasting mat the same. Not the menu. Or Do not trust the menu. Don't, don't trust anything. Caution to the wind. Drink them in whatever order you want. That's but true. The, but we are drinking them in the mat order. So. That's true. Uh, that's not a reference to Matt Bailey, by the way. No. But, well, he would probably want it to be done that way, so we're homaging his order, but on the mats. It's a mats mat, is what we've done. It, it is a bit of a mats mat. So, what we have here is Rare Release 10, Smuggler's Bacon. Now, we did not put bacon in the cask. We did not wash this with bacon. We didn't smuggle it either. No, we did not smuggle it. This is not the, uh, you know, pirating days. I'm gonna gonna propose something crazy. I'm gonna propose something very crazy live here. We're not live, it's pre-record. Well, let's do these side by side. We've got two heavily petered Isle of Drams. Let's do it. Members are gonna wanna make make a call. I would recommend you know, you've Members touched, at home, you've touched on something that's side. very good because I think for the first time we've had rare release uh, Isla face shield bottlings, if you will, which are both heavily peated. We have three green flavour strips, lightly peated, peated, and heavily peated. These are both heavily peated. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we had a heavily peated last year. No. We and- just had peated. I would say that, I, from memory, that's correct, and the reason I can be extra confident is heavily peated would be our, our globally, collectively, uh, most underrepresented flavour profile. It's quite difficult to find something that the panel go, more actually deserves the title of heavily uh, was peated. This, was this smoke? That that's, is your smoke. Okay, that's a lot um, more sherry than I imagine it would be, actually. So, smoke, this is me doing my best uh, Richard Gosling impression. Smoke is probably the combination of smoke and oak. <laughs> That's amazing. And you know what else is amazing? Shout out Quick Richard. shout out to Richard Gosselin, because he is amazing. He, he is, is the global UK editor of Unfiltered Magazine. If you're not reading Unfiltered Magazine, read it. You should be. Read it now. I do my best to adapt it to the local market, but Richard Gosselin is the mind Stop this stream it. immediately and go and read some Unfiltered for a couple of days. There's a lot of back issues. There's a lot of content you can get through. So, what we have here, Rare Release 10, Refill X Bourbon and Second Fill XPX Hogsheads, and Rare Release 29, that's right, Magical 29, Magical 29. Refill Bourbon Hogsheads and First Fill STR X Oloroso Barriques. That is truly delicious. And uh, just a little tiny extra note about Rare Release 10 that is in heavily peated profile. Um, oh, quick point on profiles. When a distillery has multiple expressions or types of expression, generally speaking, the society doesn't distinguish. Uh, based on like a peating level, um, the society codes are ordinarily based on the way they make the whiskey. So it's a run, it's a it's a mash bill um, with with peat excluded from the consideration. So when we get heavily peated rare release tens or tens in general for single casks, usually it's what you'd see as a distillery ten can't name the distillery Moiner. Uh, from their from their profile, not a major, um, just a minor, just just a minor. Yeah. Um, we also don't really concentrate on PPI levels. I know a lot of other distilleries, yeah, it's you know, they really nerd out about that. Doesn't really matter. Don't get me started on how meaningless it is because it's a pre-distillation number. Don't worry about it. If you like the peat level on it, enjoy the whiskey and don't worry about PPM. Uh, I mean, I that that rarely ten is just. It's everything I'd want from a heavily peated ten. At the end of the day, you know, it's actually got a lovely herbaceousness. Oh, so the I was getting a lot of um, like thyme, um, from yeah, the, like Ital- Italian cooking from the uh, nose herbs. Or the oh, only on the nose so far. I've not tried it, but okay. It, it's um, it's like a lovely, yeah, like, Pe- like Italian herb mix. Yeah, I would say pizza yeah. before it's been put in the oven. Correct, it's like a 
classic margarita. It's exactly where I was going. And it's almost got just a touch of that. If uh, we've got wine enthusiasts among our members, I'm sure we do. It's like that um, uh, the vine tomato or capsicum note on a cab sav for me, just a tiny bit on the, on the nose. Right, instead of having a second sip of that, I'm going to go to smoke. Yeah. Smoke, you know that's a, probably a combination of smoke and oak. Really? <laughs> Incredible stuff right here. I'm making fun of you, Richard. And for those who haven't caught on, we are looking at the rare release Isla releases. So the face shield releases for 2024, which we have right here in Australia, ready to purchase this Friday. Friday the... 28th. Don't, don't try it, mate. Don't try yourself. Yeah. No, no, no. I got it. 28th of June. Because I know 30th is Sunday. Clever. I know a reference point. Give him a reference point. He can nail it. I know what I'm about. <laughs> um, that, is, that is lovely. And I think it's good for a side-by-side -side because it shows you the, well, the, the, the breadth, like you said earlier, on, a, on flavour notes within a flavour profile. Because both are heavily Absolutely. peated. Both are Isla. They taste nothing alike, though. They taste nothing alike. They're, they are different ends of Isla. You know, sort of North Isla and South Isla in terms of the two distilleries. Um, but very, very different drams. And it, it happens a lot with peated. Because peated profile gives you nothing but the fact that it's peated. Mm. And at various, the three levels we indicate. So the rest of the flavour is, a, um, is a, in the tasting notes and on you trying the dram itself. I must say, this rare release 29, which... Oh, is going to be popular it's good because twenty nines we don't see very often, and they are incredible. And this is a twenty five year old, twenty five year old, twenty rare release twenty nine. That is ridiculous, and for a fantastic price when you consider it's a cast strength sherry matured from this distillery. You know you're going to have a laugh. You're really going to have a laugh about it. Um, um, you, did you <clears throat> stay up a lot of last night writing that? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> Why do they put me in these situations? <laughs> but I'm uh, so usually for reference, I get a lot of um, mothball notes from our car strength single oh, cast yeah, okay. yeah, okay. lot, which remind me of my um, my uncle and auntie, my Fia and Thea's um, houses, and it's sort of that mothball note, which is just like you know, same generations my grandparents but their cousins or I, siblings. I, I know what you mean it's like those beautiful notes that come out of the kind of um like grandma's cupboard yeah uh, it, it's like a portmanteau term but it can mean things like boiled sweets or like mothballs or must you know like the mustiness yeah of old, old books exactly they own right that. that's exactly right but on this one i'm getting a lot of salt like a lot of salt in a good way. It's the same as when we talked before salt, about personally. salt. Yeah, exactly. Like take me to the chip. He had a lot of salt. Yeah, but in the best possible way. Where you're like, I want it. I want lathered potato and salt. Beautiful. This rare release twenty nine is a lot nicer than I remember it tasting the first time I tried it. I think you you're dead right. It's one of those ones as well. I mean, twenty five year old age statement on an Isla distillery. Yeah. Isla distilleries are famous for uh, if you love peat, which I mean heavily peated profile. Uh, being not better, but more heavy on the peat at a younger age, because peat, as we know, sort of deteriorates the older over yes. time. Yep. Um, so, one, quite impressive that it's a heavily peated profile after 25-year age statement. Yep. Like, that in itself is, is amazing for Distillery 29. I think the only other Distillery 29s I've had in the heavily peated profile are under 10. I think <laughs> that's a big call. There's I probably mean, more you know, when you compare the two. You know, but I'm sure for my own personal anecdotes... Back to about 2014, 13, 14, I can't remember anything but one or two that I had that were heavily peated and they were both sort of eight and nine year old. Yeah, sorry, 29s. Um, but the other thing is the, yeah, the depth of flavour. I, I would caution water with this purely because the mouthfeel is so amazing as it is. You might want to open it up or dilute the peat quality a little bit if, if you aren't a peat head, but if you're not a peat head, probably don't buy a heavily peated bottle of whiskey buy one for a friend um but and we've already seen a lot of interest in this rare release 29 from the melbourne and the sydney face oh yeah um experiences so you know yeah. I, I can't remember how many we got of these in the country it wouldn't have been a lot well from, from memory we had a small allocation at, at the events and they sold and so there will be a release of course for when this is released in our turn but it will be limited this friday the 28th He's got it. He's 30 got it. bottles we've got in the country. Take out the tasting packs, the events, the ones that have already sold at the events. We'll probably only put up, what, a dozen or dozen plus. Oh, yeah, few left. probably maybe 15. So yeah. 
Um, just quickly, going back to this Rare Release 10, because the Rare Release 29 is amazing, but we can't forget this Rare Release 10 because these are some of my favourite peated whiskies that we get through in the society. I'm getting an insane uh, powdered sugar okay. cinnamon donut. Okay, so that's exactly perfect because what I was going to say is after a little bit of time in the glass on the nose, it reminds me of my um, late grandfather's... Uh, porridge that he would make when i was really young i'd spend a lot of time at babunya's house my grandparents house and he would have porridge every morning with cinnamon there you go and that's exactly what it is porridge with cinnamon it's but with a little that. bit of heat it's so. after the if it's after the 20, sorry, 29 i think i would not have necessarily got that before but the effect of the side by side is the moment i went back and clearly we're on the same page it, it's, it was for me with it without the point of reference it was powdered sugar cinnamon donuts like fresh out of the where they drop them in and then they roll them in the powdered sugar and then they give them to you which yeah. is an absolute parallel running um tasting yeah. note that is d i like that more now i'm not saying you need to buy a bottle of each to make this work but that note on the nose on this now rare release 10 is it's my favorite note of all like, but also if you don't don't buy a bottle of each, then you'll probably regret it because one of these will sell out absolutely. I'm definitely buying a bottle of this uh, Smuggler's Bacon. Oh, man, I mean, yeah. The bacon is actually... Let's pause on that because it is in the title, but I'm not getting a heap of sort of the umami and the, and the salted bacon. I mean, the salt, yes, but not salt, with the yeah. salted meat so much, but mainly because it's now been drowned out by the pastry element, um, which I love. I would prefer a bit of a... Bit of a stalwart. I love it. I love it. As you know from the cask I selected, I would prefer a, a dominant pastry note than a dominant oh, absolutely. umami meat note. But as you know, I was in Brisbane recently and I um, went to Loon a couple of times, and remarkably, there was no line at Loon. If you ever, if you ever, you've been to Melbourne, Melbourne Loon, you've seen Street. the line. I guarantee you've seen the line. Huge Brisbane. There's no one there. It's ridiculous. In a good way. Though. What Adam's saying is, go to Brisbane if you want to get a croissant. Yeah, I'll drop <laughs> a croissant in again. Or, or a morning, uh, a morning roll, morning, morning love roll, cinnamon. morning roll. But that smuggles bacon ten. So I'll just, I won't cap this off because I'm not quite done yet. But rare release ten, rare release thirty nine, and probably rare release ninety three. Unsurprisingly, my top three picks, just I incredible. Like with, um, I yeah. mean rhubarb and fig and crumble. Rare release fifty five coming in very hot on the tail of yep. third because. That one, as we spoke oh. about, the, the pastry note, the casting sugar was delicious. Incredible. I think, Incredible. Uh, I think the, the take-home point uh, for those not playing along at home, because you can make your own call on your favourites, is that it, the festival releases this year are beautiful examples of uh, terroir on the region in Scotland. Oh, you that's, said the T-word. No, I did it. I did it. Uh, or I could say regionality to be less, Thank you. you know, whatever about it. But the... Um, the reason for festival celebration with the society is because there are these festivals in Scotland that have targeted the Scottish whisky regions. And Scottish whisky regions have long been a thing where they've been challenged, you know, is it appropriate to only require three distilleries in an area to get a region qualification? You know, Campbelltown almost lost its qualification when it went to, it almost went to two distilleries, wow. which is why there are now three. The stories about Scottish regions are a fun and a really important part of Scottish whisky history. So to have so many casts within the festival releases lets members do a couple of things. Compare side by side that regionality. See if you can see things that are the same between Speyside distilleries that are, you know, the DNA of Speyside running through the drams. Get the breadth of, of the variants. You know, you can go, well, I've got Highland whiskies will have that more umami and more meaty note. Speyside will always have fruit. Uh, Isla will always have peat, whatever you're looking for in your drags. But on top of that, the festivals with the society is all about, for me, mm. we do rare releases because every member everywhere in the world can share the same dram. And then if yeah. you talk to someone in Germany or France or Japan or China or, or, or South Africa or Mexico now with the expansion of those branches, Singapore, wherever, you're getting the same rare releases which means your notes can compare directly to their notes. And what we saw with the, the lovely Greek references to Adam's heritage, with heritage pudding being a Scottish reference, ironically, uh, you will get different notes that define the region based on your history, and it's important to talk about that and expand our flavour notes. Um, I think side-by-siding as many drams as possible is good, 
and we've done it tonight with 12 drafts. Absolutely. And, and just very quickly on that, we're an independent bottler, yes, but we're also a membership club and our members come first. And part of being a member of the society is, as you said, sharing those notes with fellow members. So please get together with your fellow members, um, whether that be online, virtually, or in person, and have a, Share have a comparison. Share it yeah, absolutely. But Share it around. It's nothing if you haven't shared it. I've always said if, you, if I drink the best whiskey in the world to me and you've never had it and I come to you and talk about it, you won't care at all. You won't understand what I'm talking about. If we share the same dram, that'll be a pretty important moment for both of us. Liquid to lips. Correct. Now, you, you've probably noticed this isn't a normal uh, virtual tasting. We haven't gone in-depth in the distilleries. We haven't talked about the uh, maturation process of... Well, we've talked a little bit about it, but not yep. so much the distilling process of individual distilleries. This is just about the flavour of the whiskies because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. It's what you've got in front of you what you're tasting and what you enjoy. And we have three times the drams we normally do on these things. So, you know, we had to be brief. Yeah. Yeah, there are a few drams um, today. But hopefully everyone at home following along with the drams, uh, if you've got... I mean, Adam and I have been sharing the 30 mil samples. So, yeah, awesome. Um, easy to do because there's plenty in there to, to try everything. If you're doing it solo, uh, good luck. Take your time. Um, but take your time, please. But also yeah. it, it does allow you to revisit. So when this is over, which it will be shortly for you, um, if you've got enough glassware to have had a, a, a sample in each glass, please revisit. I think with at least nine of them, um, time will only benefit, and the rest probably, but um, some are so quaffable. You know, you might uh, have none left like we don't. Um, I've, I've just gone back to this uh, rare release 39 and on the nose. Yeah, oh my lord, spectacular. I think we'll uh, leave you there. Absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank Thanks you. for everyone who got the uh, five dram pack as well. Um, if you got the 12 pack, you got the full range. We've got bottles to be released. Some have obviously been, been released already in the month, festival's month. Isla releases this Friday, 28th. Oh, this so Friday. we've got in Highland and Speyside and Campbelltown releases, the rare release 39. Already on sale now. Some still available, of course, with most Absolutely. of those. Um, jump on before it's too late because, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things they'll be, they'll be snapped up once they're tried and they will be tried at Whiskey and yeah. Altman here or, or um, otherwise. At our festival tastings all over the country and Launceston, we have a very late but still very ripe festival tasting on sale now for you to try yeah. in July. So jump, jump on, on that, jump on the website, try good whiskey, enjoy yourselves. Take care. Slange of Alex, thank you. Adam, thank you.